Hi, everyone. I'm Evelyn Prim, the communications coordinator for the city of Montpelier, and I am here with Cemetery Director Patrick Healy. And Patrick is going to run through the FY25 budget for the cemeteries. So I will share our screen and we will get going. All right. Take it away, Patrick. All right. Introduction to Greenmount Cemetery. Four employees. What do we have? Um, I'm presently at a 0.6 uh, full time equivalent. Um, after uh, 36 years, I got I retired and I've gone back to part time. We have a technician, Carl Griffith, who's been with us for five or six years, and he's full time. And he, his position is shared with DPW in the winter time. And then we have a seasonal worker named Earl Fector, and then we have our work crew from the Department of Corrections, six to eight people, uh, five days a week. So, what are our core services? Well, um, first, I, I would argue that. Greenmount Cemetery may be the longest service that the city of Montpelier has. We began back in 1852, and even before that, the city provided cemetery burials at the Yelm Street Cemetery. So what are we doing for core services? We're providing natural, traditional, and cremation lots and respective burials. We maintain 35-plus landscaped acres of monuments, grass, and three miles worth of roads. We also, for the city of Montpelier, we mow various green spaces around the city, which includes Stonecutters Way, the both roundabouts, Berlin bus stop, and other locations. And we do provide our one employee to DPW for winter operations. Services and constraints. Uh, here's a picture of Carl and I, um, after one of our volunteers named Frank Ellis, a former city employee, um, washed for us. And uh, this is one of the, the services that we provide. We offer a full array of personalized burial and memorial options from cremation to traditional to natural burials. Financial constraints have always caused an evaluation of how and what tasks we are performing. We're always looking for ways to reallocate our limited resources. Our budget for FY25, we'll be requesting approximately one penny on the tax rate, which works out to be about $37 per year on an average home value at $350,000. Our cemetery has always worked with limited funding and we'll find ways to efficiently allocate our dollars. For example, we use a corrections crew at the cost of $28,000 per year compared to if we privatize the mowing, we would need to expend about $250,000. Another way that we're trying to efficiently use our dollars is since COVID, we stopped mowing the whole cemetery for that country club look. And we mow the sections created after 1940, once every two weeks. And a big portion of the cemetery that was created in the mid to late 1800s, we mow that once or twice in the fall. Keep in mind these sections, these older sections were not mowed for the first 100 years of their creation. Why? Because mowers were not created until the 1950s. During COVID, our corrections crew could not come to the cemetery. But now that they are back, working four hours a day, five days a week from mid-May to mid-November, we are reallocating a portion of their time to repair and wash all the memorials and regrade the ground in sections one at a time. Many of these memorials have not been touched for decades. We expect it to take another five years to finish going through and washing and fixing all the money. As I said earlier, we have a director, myself, at 0.6 full-time, a cemetery technician at 1.0 full-time, which is shared with DPW in the winter, and one seasonal employee on top of the jail crew. Here's a slide of our expenditure summary over the last 10 years. You'll see that our actual budgeted and over-budgeted, uh, what we've done, and we're pretty well level um, spending over those years. Challenges and opportunities. Challenges have always been limited financial resources. We, we have a difficult terrain to maintain to modern standards. Keep in mind, most of the cemetery was constructed in the 1850s where they had no idea that it was going to be mowed. Another challenge is keeping up to date on the ever-changing burial practices. And we've done that by adding natural burial um, possibilities throughout the cemetery. Another challenge is our limited land. We're, we've almost used up all of our land and it's time to start looking for 
additional land. The other challenge is fossil fuel use and climate change and pollinator demise. We're trying to play all this, uh, we're trying to take care of all these challenges when, we're, when possible. Opportunities, financial and physical landscape challenges create an atmosphere of creativity in order to keep this 170 year old municipal service performing to the expectations of our past, present and future president. Okay, so how do we meet the uh, strategic plan that the city council has laid out? We embrace outdoor recreation, walking, running in the cemetery and arts, the form of monuments and memorials. And that helps the economic development of the area granite manufacturers. We do get a lot of tourists that stop by to see the cemetery. We actively engage residents in the governance of the cemetery by having a publicly elected board that oversees the cemetery in trust for the city. We practice good environmental stewardship by changing mowing practices, electrifying our trimmers, and welcoming natural burial practices. We play a small part in addressing the mental health and addiction issues by accepting offenders on a work crew to contribute to the care and maintenance of our cemetery. Thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me um, at cemetery at montpelier-vt.org, or you can always call my cell phone at 802-279-6957. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much for that, Patrick. Um, so just to outline again in the timeline for the budget process, we have uh, two public hearings coming up in January, one on the 10th and the 24th. All the information on how to participate in those is on our website in the Agenda Center. Uh, the City Council will make a decision on the budget to go on the town meeting day ballot on January 25th, and then our community will vote on that uh, proposed budget on March 5th. Uh, so thanks again for watching, and be sure to check out all the other department video presentations uh, right along in this playlist.